Dad found his birth parents through a genetic test, and now we have a whole new family with amazing grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. My dad, who was usually an emotionally reserved man, was curled up on the couch grinning as he was texting Jim for the first time. I was still in shock from the news but was so happy to see my dad even happier than when I graduated uni. Soon thereafter, he also received a message from his biological mom, Debbie, not her real name. By talking to them both, my dad learned the story of his birth and I think that it's absolutely wild. Debbie is the daughter of an Australian mining engineer and they all moved to Canada for his work when she was in high school. Later on, they moved to the Midwest where she met Jim at the age of 17. They were high school sweethearts and were thinking of marriage after they graduated, but then Debbie got pregnant. This being the 60s, this was a huge deal. Her dad was furious and sent her back to Canada to give birth and arranged a private adoption as he knew of a couple who were trying to have a kid, my grandparents. Once she gave birth, she was able to let Jim know that she was being sent back to Australia. They never saw each again for the next 40 years. Jim apparently was only able to move on once he received a letter over five years later from Debbie saying that she got married. Eventually, he got married too, and they moved to the West Coast, but his wife got into a terrible car crash and lost the use of both legs and one arm, so they were never able to have kids. Debbie had three daughters in Australia, the oldest of which is seven years younger than my dad. They saw each other for the first time around 12 years ago, as they reconnected on Facebook and Debbie happened to be taking a trip to the West Coast of America. Both Jim and Debbie had always wanted to keep my dad, and so they tried for decades to find him. But my province apparently is one of the hardest places in the world to find adoption information, especially since my dad only received his birth certificate at his baptism, so their names were not on it. Jim had essentially given up trying to find my dad until genetic tests became popular. He asked Debbie to take every single one, and he did the same about five years ago in the hopes that one day my dad would take one. When he received my dad's message, he immediately wrote to Debbie, I found him. Since then, we have had several calls with Jim and his wife, and they are absolutely lovely. We are their only family since they don't have kids and I couldn't be happier. At the end of the month, we'll be flying to the West Coast to meet them. It has been harder to talk to Debbie as Australia is so many hours ahead of us, but she also is so kind and an absolute joy to talk to. I haven't met my three new aunts yet, but apparently one lives in London. It's crazy to think that I might have been within a few kilometers of her the few times I visited. I also have five new younger cousins. A couple of them are huge fans of Japanese culture, so they're ecstatic to hear that they have half-Japanese cousins. My mom is Japanese-Canadian, so my sister and I are both half. We hope to visit them one day in Australia, but we might all meet up in Japan next year. I don't know how to end this. I am still processing everything. It's absolutely incredible to have my family grow so much but also a little overwhelming. I'm so happy for my dad, for Jim, and for Debbie, and I'm so excited to get to know them better. I hope I get to meet my new cousin soon too. I feel so incredibly lucky that this happened, seemingly against all odds. My dad was initially raised francophone, so it's a miracle that they even speak the same language. Anyways, thank you so much for taking the time to read through this, and my apologies for how long this post ended up being. Update one to those who were concerned that we would abandon my grandparents that I grew up with, that is most definitely not the case. They were the people I grew up with, and I absolutely love them to bits, although only my grandmother is still with us. All the incredible times I've had with her growing up are so much more important than blood, and I can't comprehend the stories I read where people forget about their adoptive parents or grandparents when they find their biological ones. I won't recap my previous post here because I'm lazy haha. So we just got back from visiting Jim and his wife, who I'll call Mary, not her real name, on the West Coast, and it was one of the best experiences of my life. We spent a week in their city and got to experience so much with them. Our first time meeting them in person was very emotional and felt very surreal. So we spent the whole day looking through my dad's and our old photos, basically catching Jim up on everything that he has missed over the past 56 years. We also got to see so many of his and Mary's old photos too, which was very cool. We went to a park near their house and on the walk, I heard Jim whisper my son with a massive smile across his face. Throughout the week, we explored their city and saw so many cool sights and tried so much delicious food. Mary knows her city so well and it was great to see her favorite spots all around the city from food carts to gardens to museums. We all went to an incredible Japanese-American museum and Jim and Mary absolutely loved it. We went on two hikes with Jim. Mary wasn't able to come because she is in a wheelchair. It's so cool to have such an active and outdoorsy grandfather who was able to go on such long hikes. He taught us some foraging tips and told us stories from when he used to camp for years on end. Both he and Mary are very spiritual so he also told us great stories from meditation retreats they've done. He's even tried psychedelics, so he's definitely the cool grandpa. I won't go into precise details of places we went, 
but it was great exploring such a cool part of the world with amazing people. We were all very sad when the trip was over and we had to leave. I've gained two new grandparents on the West Coast and I couldn't be happier. And they said that they've gained two grandchildren. I'm so glad that they see us as such. Mary told me her greatest regret in life was not being able to have children and grandchildren, but now she does. This has been such a transformative time in our lives. And I think it's incredible, Jays, at how many people are so much happier now because my sister just happened to get my dad a Deanna test. This is just the beginning of our relationship with our new grandparents and I am so excited. Now on to story two. Discover that my future in-laws mock and think I'm stupid because I ask a lot of questions, including my fiance who laughed along and insulted. I, 23F, am engaged to John, 24M. We are together for five years. We want to get married in July 2025. I always thought that his family liked me because we get along well. He has two older brothers, 26M, 29M, both married. Honestly, I was very excited to have them all as my in-laws. They were always kind to me. Some kind of important information. About a year ago, when I was scrolling on Instagram, I saw a profile that was kind of cringy but in a cute way. It was an older woman's profile who shared inspirational quotes. I remember one particular post, and it was something in the lines of only stupid people pretend to know everything. Don't pretend. Just ask. Honestly, this quote changed me in a lot of ways. Before that, I was always worried that I might embarrass myself if I don't know something, and after reading that quote, I realized that if I always pretend that I know everything then, I'll miss out on actually getting to learn about things. So I decided to change my habits and start admitting that sometimes I genuinely don't know. Someone is talking about the war in Kosovo. Okay, sure, but first let me ask some questions so I can really understand what we're talking about. And I ask a lot of questions sometimes. I sometimes even open the Notes app and write in some questions that I later want to find answers to. These are my latest, how does the time work in the black hole? Why some snails have shells and others don't? What food is okay for ducks? How does the light bulb work? The old ones with gas inside them? Does everyone see colors the same? And how can we know that? Sorry for the long introduction, but it was kind of necessary for understanding what kind of person I am. I know that sometimes I might come across as annoying. Now onto the problem, his parents hosted a small barbecue last weekend only for the family. So it was the mom, 54F dad, 59M, brothers, 26M, 29M, and their wives, 27F. 27F. I was the last person who showed up because I had to work late. I entered the house and when I was walking towards the back of the house into the backyard I heard John's mom talking about me. To be honest she wasn't talking about me, more like mocking me. I heard her say in a high-pitched voice how does sun work? Where should I put the fork? Why does nobody like me? How do I wipe my ass? I just stood there. I had this sinking feeling. I couldn't move so I just stood there and I heard them all laughing. One of the wives said I actually don't mind her always asking questions. I think it's cute, and it made me feel hopeful that they will say something like, yeah, sure, we're just playing, we love that, but none of them did. Instead, the mom replied, it's not cute, she's just stupid. After that, they laughed again. I heard John laughing. My heart kind of broke in that moment because he didn't even say one positive thing. He didn't defend me. He just laughed. I quietly turned around and left the house. I texted John that I got sick and have to stay home. Now I'm wondering how should I approach this situation. We live together and I sleep in the guest bedroom for now and I use the excuse that I don't want him to get sick from being around me. I can't ignore him forever and I can't pretend to be sick anymore because it's been too long. I'm not sure how do I proceed. Maybe it was just a misunderstanding. I'm considering talking to them about this, but I'm also worried that they won't be honest with me. I can't marry him if he really thinks I'm stupid, but I also can't marry into a family who thinks so little of me. But maybe it was a joke and I shouldn't take it so seriously. I'm so torn apart and every day I convince myself a bit more that it's okay and sometimes we should all laugh about ourselves. Now I feel like I'm just going crazy. I would really appreciate some advice. Edit. There are many comments saying that they cannot stand people like me. I agree that sometimes I can be a bit too much with the questie. Ons, but with that being said, I still think I'm within reason. I don't do it around people I just met. I rarely do it at parties or other gatherings. I usually do it with people who are close to me, who I think wouldn't judge me, or with people who specifically have knowledge about something and are willing to share it. If I'm a part of a conversation, I'm not rude and I'm not interrupting, I usually just ask one or two questions. If a discussion is about the climate change, I'm not asking about monkeys if you know what I'm saying. I'm also not a complete dumbass. I don't ask questions which generally would be considered dumb to other people. Those I just write in the notes and check answers later in the internet. I'm capable of reading so I make good use of it. But after all, I still do ask questions a lot. Update 1. First of all, I wanted to say thank you to people who reached out to answer my questions about black holes, snails, 
light bulbs and other stuff. I would love to have you as my friends. For the other people who said I should just shut up, I don't really care if you find me annoying or hard to be around. I'm okay with that. I don't exist to please everyone. I'm just here for a good time, have my own interests and learn. I didn't expect my post to gain so much attention, but I'm so grateful for the advice. Most of you told me to break up with him and at the very least confront him, so that's what I decided to do. You gave me a push in confidence to do it. But before I did that, I texted the wife of John's brother, the one who said she liked me asking questions. I asked if we can meet up for coffee. She said sure. We met and I didn't see the point in pretending to her that I didn't hear their conversation. So after some small talk I just said I heard you all talking about me during the barbecue. She immediately got sad and said she feels embarrassed. She explained that it wasn't a joke, wasn't out of context, that it was just mean and hurtful. She shec sorry for not defending me more, but I said that's it's okay and I understand. So I told her that I don't blame her for anything and just wanted to make sure that I understand the situation and see it for what it really was. And it really was laughing about me behind my back, just bullying. At this point, I just had to confront John. In my last post, so many comments were saying that he will probably try gaslighting me. And you were right. We were having dinner together for the first time since the barbecue happened, because before I tried my best to avoid him. Yes, I know, not very mature of me, but other than you guys, I don't really have a strong support system. My family and best friends are hundreds of kilometers away. I only have two good friends here. I was so stressed I thought I'm going to pass out. My legs were shaking and I was terrified because I knew deep down that this is the moment when my five-year relationship goes down the drain. I looked him in the eyes and asked, how does the sun work? He looked confused, so I followed with where should I put my fork? Why does nobody like me? At this point, realization hit him and he started nervously laughing. I said I was there and I heard them. After the initial shock passed, he got mad. He said it's rude to eavesdrop. I said it's rude to bully people. He tried telling me that it was just a joke, that I shouldn't be so uptight, that it really was funny. I said that I didn't find it funny and went to the guest to calm down. He started panicking. And he was asking me to please talk to him. He was much more apologetic and said that he will be 100% honest with me. I asked if his mother made similar comments before the barbecue. He said yes. I asked him if he ever defended me. He said he tries to. I don't know if I believe him. He told me he loves me and respects me. I don't know if I believe it either. I said that I love him too, but I need a break. He's all I ever known. He was my first and only partner. I have no UO side perspective of this. I have no experience. I need a moment to think. I will be going to my friend's house for a while to think everything through. The apartment has his name on the lease anyway. After I gathered some of my things and left, he kept texting me nonstop. He tried calling, but I didn't respond. I was very hurt because he tried to belittle my feelings and only later when he realized that I might break up with him, started apologizing. The next day I decided to give him another chance to explain himself and I came back to the apartment. He seemed very sad and tired. He said that he told his mother that I overheard them. I said I don't care. It's his time to step up and show me that he cares. I'm not interested in an apology from his mother. I'm already done with her. I can't put up with this behavior and mocking me like we're in primary school. I saw a comment saying that probably her ego is hurting. I think it's true. She never got the chance or never had desire to have an education. She is a very good homemaker, but outside of that, she doesn't have many interests of her own. If I'm asking her about making tomato soup, she will be talking for 30 minutes lecturing me about adding enough sugar, but not too much. She will lecture anyone who is willing to listen. But anytime someone is talking about something she's not familiar with, she gets defensive and try to imply that nobody cares about that, and if it's not relevant to her, it shouldn't be discussed. So once again he tried telling me that I should relax because it was only a joke, and at this point I had enough. I took up my ring and told him that his behavior is a joke and I can't be the punchline. I told him that I wish him and his family the best and to look in the mirror to check if they really are as superior as they think they are. I said I'm going to be back with my friends soon to pick up the rest of my stuff and to not contact me again, unless it's about moving my things out. 